Hi, I'm Susan Sayer, founder and CEO of the COA Club. And I'm Mika Golbig, a life and leadership coach. Thank you for being back here with us today at COA Club TV. Today, I have a very interesting topic that uh, I think we should explore. Okay. Um, so I have a friend, uh, a really good girlfriend of mine. So she told me recently that she broke up with a guy that she's been dating for not very long, but you know, maybe a month or so. Um, and she said that the reason why she broke up with him is because um, he would not make any decisions when they about their dates. So mm -hmm. basically, uh, you know, wherever they, wherever they were going to meet, what restaurants they're going to eat, even the topics of conversation, he basically left it all to her to be the one driving all the decision making and all the, hmm. you know, everything. So he's basically just taking a step back and letting her drive it. So, but she, on the other hand, was really frustrated with that. And she decided that, no, this is not going to work for me. So she broke up with him. And he was actually really, he, she told me that he was really surprised when she broke up with him because he said to her, I thought I was being a gentlemanly thing. I'm doing the gentlemanly thing by letting you make all the decisions so, so you, you won't be forced to do anything you don't want to do. But what he didn't realize was that they should probably have a conversation about this <laughs> early on. But what he didn't realize that she has a very stressful um, job at work. She's, you know, uh, she leads a big team. She's making decisions all day long with her team stuff and with management and everything. So by the end of the day, she's really tired and mm -hmm. stressed out to begin with. And the fact that having to make decisions about like her personal life, she already had to make decisions about her personal life. The last thing she wants to do is to make decisions about going on a date, right, with this guy who keeps letting her make the decisions mm -hmm. because maybe he's lazy, I don't know. But anyway, so she broke up with him. And so she asked me, you know, did I do the wrong thing? And I said, well, you know, I mean, obviously, there was no chemistry because you broke up with him. But on the other hand, you know, there is such a thing as, you know, uh, I, I, you know, there is such a thing as decision fatigue. So, so I mean, you, there is yeah. decision fatigue that can happen to people, yeah. right, Mika? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That is a thing. Decision fatigue is a thing. And I'm totally with your friend. I'm not saying there's a right or wrong mm -hmm. here, but I can totally feel her on that one. Mm -hmm. I really don't want to take decisions about where to go to dinner or something right. like I'm like nah I can tell you what I don't want to eat but please don't force me to decide where to go yeah yeah so decision fatigue uh, so the studies show very clearly that we take about 35,000 decisions a day wow yeah that is on average so depending on your situation let's say if you lead a big team like your friend or if you have four children under 10, mm -hmm. I bet you make a lot more decisions. Mm -hmm. I bet. And th that's often not like those big conscious decisions, right? So for instance, when we scroll down our social media feed, we waste a lot of decisions of, should I scroll further, mm -hmm. right? That is decisions that subconsciously happen. Right. So that's how we come up with this huge number. Right. But what these studies show as well is that the quality of our decisions goes down over time. Mm -hmm. So uh, it, makes, it makes it harder to A, decide at all, mm -hmm. and make good decisions. Mm -hmm. That takes more and more effort, or we just can't do it. Right, right. So that's what's happening here with decision fatigue. Yeah, exactly. It's, um, it, it sounds like in her case, that's the, that, that is what's happening. Mm -hmm. And, you know, again, um, many times when we have so many decisions to make yeah. all the time. And if we are constantly making so many decisions yeah. and have to make so many complex trade-offs and things like that, we could get burned out. Right. Uh, right. And right. then when we get burned out, then, you know, again, what do you do? What do you, you know, then you don't want to make any decisions or you, or for me, I run out of fuel sometimes mm -hmm. and then I don't want to make any more decisions. So yeah. I make poor choices yeah. when that happens, yeah. right? And, and that happens. Like, for example, my husband would say, sometimes would say to me, um, uh, you know, what do you want to eat for dinner? Oh. And I would be, I don't have any energy to 
tackle that and I always I will say I don't really care make whatever and then at dinner time I am sad because, <laughs> because he would make like a dish that he would want mostly vegetarian again we go back to the fact that I am not a vegetarian person <laughs> so he'll make something vegetarian and I'll be like damn it I should have told him what I would prefer like a steak yeah. uh, so yeah. again um, it's not that we necessarily you know can you know what do you call it? Um, not not ha not make decisions. I mean, this, there are things that we have to make it's choices just hard. about. Yeah, like uh, an example that probably resonates with almost everybody is you leave the house in the morning. Or no, that doesn't resonate with people anymore in twenty twenty. <laughs> um, you right. you start work yeah. in the morning, right. and you are totally dead set on going to the gym or working out after mm -hmm. work, going running, whatever, after work. That's right. So, and half the day you're totally fine with your plan and then let's say 6 or 7 p.m. rolls around mm -hmm. and you're totally not at the gym or in your running clothes. Mm -hmm. You are parked on your couch binging Netflix and eating <laughs> chips. Sounds that familiar. Is, <laughs> exactly. Everybody knows that, right? So that is decision fatigue because yeah. that is where we... That is where at that time, when six or seven o'clock rolls around, uh, when you can't decide, you know that your preference would be for a steak, mm -hmm. but you can't, just can't say it anymore. You're like, oh, whatever. And that is in that whatever state, you're definitely not putting on your running shoes or you're going to the gym. Right. Right. So that's, that's where decision fatigue hits us in the face. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. And, and, and the decision fatigue is, is, you know, it's prevalent because we, as you said, we generally make about what, is that 30,000 decisions, 35,000 yeah, yeah. decisions yeah. a day. That's a lot. Well, I don't even want to think about that. This is yeah. this crazy number yeah. to me. But, uh, but again, uh, we have to make decisions. So maybe the things to do uh, would be to, uh, you know, choose, decide what are important decisions that you yeah have to make yeah. so so prioritize those things that you know oh I know that I have to do X Y and Z today and you know X and Y are really important Z may not be that important um, and because I already think about it I already thought about it and prioritize it and then I can just maybe let go of the decision on Z for example because it's not that important to me uh, focus on the ones that are really important to me and maybe start the day by doing it early too like I I'm a I'm a morning person so I I think yeah. better and faster and more efficiently yeah. in the morning. So maybe make, for, for me anyway, make my uh, key decisions uh, in the morning um, on all the big important stuff to the extent that I can. So maybe the way I should do this is instead of waiting for my husband to tell me, ask me what I want for dinner later in the day when I'm really tired, I should tell him early in the day when I wake up yeah. because dinner is important to me. That's that? an important decision I'm not willing to give up on. So I should tell him early in the day, hey, if you're going to make dinner, can you have, can I have like eggs, chicken, you know, yeah. something like that. And yeah. then that would just be, that would just make my, you know, then I wouldn't regret what I haven't, you know, the decisions yeah. that I've made. Yeah. So it is, First of all, really about reducing the number of decisions we make mm -hmm. on the yeah. level how you explained it with priorities, but also on the level of those um, uh, subconscious decisions. Because, of course, we don't realize we're making 35,000 decisions right, sure. a day. Or, yeah. So, for instance, when you think about it, when you learn how to drive a car, mm -hmm. you're taking hundreds of decisions while driving a car because it takes your full attention. Mm -hmm. Later, when you are uh, an experienced driver, you don't realize that you're making those decisions. Mm -hmm. They are subconscious. And mm -hmm. that's what we do in many, many other areas, mm -hmm. too. So it's really habits help you reduce the number of decisions. Mm -hmm. yeah? if, you, if you are the mother of four kids under 10, that is probably not a very helpful tip for you, but for everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, so that's number one. Habits help you reduce decisions. And mm -hmm. then, of course, the morning thing is actually true not only for the morning people. Uh, we all take better decisions when we are well rested. So we all take better decisions uh, in the early part of our day. Mm -hmm. yeah? And also after having food. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you take a decision hungry, chances that it's not a good decision are way higher. Mm -hmm. And then you mentioned something else, which I find super important. Dinner matters to you. You want to decide about what to eat. Right. I am 
I'm pretty good with eating the same stuff all over again. Mm -hmm. So I don't like to make a dinner decision. Mm -hmm. uh, and I have had the same breakfast for the past three years. Okay. Yeah, so uh, I eat the same stuff all the time and I'm good with that. Mm -hmm. And because it's a decision that doesn't matter to me. Mm -hmm. So in the beginning when I, when I decided to uh, skip the decision on what to eat. So I eat the same breakfast all the time and I order the same stuff at the same restaurants all the time. Mm -hmm. I don't even think about it. Right. First it felt a little, Ugh, man, it's not very sophisticated what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And I had to get over that. It's like, yeah, but I don't care enough. Right. It's right. good quality food. That's all I care for. Mm -hmm. um, and other people, let's say they decide that they always run with the same playlist. They have right. one playlist they use for workouts. Mm -hmm. Or other people think Steve Jobs, Mark Zuckerberg, Obama, mm -hmm. who all wear, wore a uniform. Mm -hmm. Same stuff almost every day. Mm -hmm. That is a decision I would hate to outsource, right? right. This is not what I want to standardize. Mm -hmm. I love making decisions about uh, what I wear. Right. On the other hand, it's not a crucial decision, so that's usually what I keep for the evenings. Mm -hmm. I don't need to waste my precious morning hour for making good decisions on that because I love my closet. Whatever I pick in the evening is probably good enough. Right, right. So, so. so basically what you're saying, Mika, is that um, if you can, to the extent you, that you can, try to simplify mm -hmm. the, you know, the different types of decisions yeah. you have to make. Some decisions is just, as you said, subconscious, yeah. like, do I want to turn the TV on how, louder? Do I want yeah, to turn yeah, the TV yeah. off? Yeah. You know, those are just subconscious things that you don't even really think about it. You don't take a lot of time or energy or, yeah. or your bandwidth. Um, but there are bigger decisions that you have to, to yeah. make. And some of, some of these bigger decisions, there may be a lot of them still in your life. Uh, on a daily basis, some of it you might be able to just, you know, if you can delegate it yeah. or if you can don't even, you know, just automate it like yeah. like you said, you know, you know, order the same things all the time yeah. because you don't have to think about it because you know you like it. So yeah. why not? Right. Yeah. Um, things like that. And and then don't agonize about it. Yeah. You know, don't agonize about the decisions that you make. I think one of the key things is that sometimes we make decisions and then we go back and we tell ourselves, did I make the wrong decision, oh. right? And then because we we are, you know, sometimes very, um, I would say, you know, not kind enough to ourselves because we want to be perfect in everything that we're yeah. trying to do, including decision making. Yeah, totally, you know? totally. But basically at the point where you say, hey, I take my important decisions in the early part of my day or when I'm fresh, mm -hmm. I am um, scheduling certain things, I'm skipping decisions, I'm standardizing stuff. You're doing the best you can. Done. Yes. Second guessing is not part of the decision making process. The decision making process is get information, make a decision, run with it, re-evaluate, mm -hmm. make a new decision. Mm -hmm. huh? Recalibrate. Right. That's the decision making process. Second guessing is not a step in that. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, and be, be kind to yourself because we all can fall victim to decision fatigue and we yeah. all do on a regular basis. Right. So, uh, but yeah. you can optimize that. So if you're thinking about moving abroad, don't discuss that with your husband over dinner. Discuss it over Sunday brunch. <laughs> That's right. Strategize it, mm -hmm. you know. Again, a lot of these decisions are within your control. Yeah. And uh, you can choose to make decisions in a way that would be beneficial. Yeah. Um, just, you know, just plan it, uh, you know, in a way you try to plan it if you can. Yeah. Um, and it's okay if you gave up on some decisions. It's okay if you made, you know, you made some some poor choices that you, you know, know, everybody makes some choices that sometimes we're like, all right, I shouldn't have no. made that choice, but don't no. beat yourself up about it. I have it. a quote about that. Okay, good, <laughs> yeah, go ahead, good, yeah. give us the quote. The goal shouldn't be to make the perfect decision every time, but to make fewer bad decisions than anyone else. That's right. So that's, right. Uh, that's Spencer <laughs> Fraser, author of The Irrational Mind, How to Fight Back Against the Hidden Forces That Affect Our Decision Making. Boy, that's a long title. I have not read the book, but I kind of like the quote. Yeah. So <laughs> I hope this was helpful. Please like the video, share it with your friends, subscribe to our channel, and don't forget to follow us on social media. Be a leader on your own terms. Right. And be brave, be koa.